for being here. I um, I wanted to get a meeting out today, uh, knowing that um, it's been perhaps a couple of weeks since you've had some personal information that's been uh, you know distributed to you via the principal at Silvercrest. So I want to make sure that uh, you had an opportunity to to hear some things directly from me. Um, I do have a presentation that I'm going to present to you at this point right now. So I'm going to apologize if you raise your hand um, or have something to say. I'm not going to be able to see you uh, because my screen is going to be showing uh, the presentation that that you're looking at right now. Um, so this is our October 7th, 2020 uh, Parent Town Hall. And I think the, the, the first thing that I wanted to share with everybody is just, my name is Wade Lockett. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I've been at Silverton High School for the last four years. I've been the principal at Silverton High School for the last three. Um, prior to that, I was out at uh, Sandy High School in Sandy for 11 years. Um, the picture that you see there is my wife, Anna, uh, my son, Joey, and my daughter, Molly. Um, but just wanted to give everybody an opportunity to, to put a face with a, with a brand new name. Uh, maybe not a brand new name, but a new name uh, as far as the principal at Silvercrest is concerned. So um, I'm excited to be here. I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to be working with you and your kids. Um, and that is my family and my kids. As far as tonight is concerned, um, this is kind of a roadmap of the things that I wanted to discuss. And I expect this to take about 10, 15 minutes. So there's not going to be a ton of time at the end of it all for for questions, but you can sure feel free to email me or give me a call uh, and, and I'll answer the questions as best I can. I'm not gonna tell you that I've got answers to every one of your questions, uh, but I will do the best to answer whatever questions that I can for you. Um, we're gonna talk about the reopening. I know Superintendent Drew sent out an email on Monday that talked about uh, you know our original idea of reopening and, and he kind of updated that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll take a look at students' class schedules um, we'll talk a little bit about meals, uh, the pickup and to-go meals, um, and the, the process for that. We'll talk about technology and connectivity and where we are with that. Uh, we'll talk about student absences and what we need to, uh, kind of our process and what we need to do as far as student absences are concerned. And then we'll talk about picture day, um, which we, you know, I know originally, well, I'll save that for when we get to pictures. Um, so we can just get to all of this stuff and be as smooth as we can possibly be. Uh, in August, when we decided to start our year with, with full comprehensive distance learning, Superintendent Drew uh, made a commitment to the district that on October 5th, we would update the district as to where we were um, and make a decision at that point as to whether we would go back to some sort of a hybrid model come November 16th or whether we were going to extend our distance learning, our comprehensive distance learning for um, another set amount of time. At this point right now, based on the metrics that we would need to hit by the state, uh, which by the way are in conversations as far as kind of loosening some of those metrics. I know that, that uh, Governor Brown has called in um, a, a few uh, experts and, and some other uh, heads to be able to have conversations about perhaps loosening some of these metrics. Uh, but at this time right now, Marion County in the state of Oregon is not meeting the metrics for us to be able to return to any kind of hybrid or in-person learning uh, by November 16th. So at this point, uh, Superintendent Drew has committed to another update by October 26th with a possible target return date for hybrid learning uh, by December 7th. Um, that's not to say we're gonna be back on December 7th, it's to say that there's gonna be another update on October 26th or by October 26th for a possible return date of, of December 7th. If for whatever reason we're not hitting the metrics by that point um, or we haven't seen some new guidance from the governor's office and the Oregon Department of Education relative to loosening of those metrics, um, then the next move would probably be taking us through the first semester, which is into to February. So just an update on that so everybody's aware that we are in this comprehensive distance learning at this point, um, most likely until at least December 7th at this point. Um, schedules, uh, I broke this up into the, the K through four schedule and then the next slide will be uh, the, the fifth through eighth schedule. Um, this is kind of a, a loose schedule that shows the meeting times, um, when our students will be doing applied learning, um, when they'll be on lunch breaks, um, when teachers are gonna be having office hours, so on and so forth. I know that most of our teachers have their own individual schedules that fit within these schedules right here. 
Um, they've most likely communicated that to parents already. If they haven't, uh, I would encourage you to have a conversation with the teacher or reach out to the teacher in order to get their specific class schedule, daily class schedule. Um, but this is what our K-4 schedule looks like. Uh, in the mornings, kindergartners are having live meeting opportunities um, at 8.30, at 9.15, first graders, at 10 o'clock, second graders. Um, you can see that as you go down. Um, the applied learning is opportunities for our students to maybe get one-on-one -on -one time with teachers or maybe small group uh, work with teachers or even to be able to work through their edgenuity courses uh, that teachers have, have assigned to students through those modules. So that's that's really what those applied learning times and teacher office hours are for, is for teacher, or, I'm sorry, for students to be able to work through those things and then also to have meetings with students um, that are outside of their lives, synchronous times with the students. Uh, I think the other important thing to keep in mind is that the times that we have up here, you know, it might be 45 minute blocks of time, in some, some instances, even longer blocks of time, the expectation isn't necessarily for the teacher to be on a live meet in front of the class for those extended periods of time. Sometimes it could be 15 minutes. Sometimes it could be, you know, a full hour, depending on what the conversation is um, or, or the topic of discussion or something along those lines. So just want to make sure that that um, that people are aware of that, that that could change just based on what the, 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 the topic, the content, um, you know, the instruction is for any given day, that there is a lot of flexibility for teachers and for students as far as um, getting onto the live meets and, and working their way through the curriculum with the teacher. So um, just want to make sure we have an opportunity to see the K-4 schedule and then the fifth through eighth schedule, which looks a little bit more confusing, but I think it's, it's also um, important to keep in mind that, you know, the fifth through eighth graders do have separate teachers for math, language arts, social studies and science. And so they kind of have to split those meeting times up uh, with, with those teachers at that time. So it, this one can, can be a little bit confusing to look at. I will send this out. Um, I'll send the, the entire PowerPoint out along with the video um, in a parent square either later tonight or early tomorrow. So you'll have an opportunity to take a look at this. And then if you have questions with uh, your student's specific schedule, uh, give you an opportunity to reach out and, and talk with the teachers about what that schedule looks like. Um, though I can't see you right now, are there any questions relative to the schedule? If you have a question, go ahead and feel free to speak up. Okay, I'll move on. Um, meals at the school are started this week. Um, grab and go meals are from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. They're in the gym turnaround. Um, when you get a grab-and-go meal, it will be lunch for that day and breakfast for the following day that's being provided. Um, there are conversations about perhaps expanding that a little bit, and we'll let you know if it does get expanded uh, as far as, um, you know, perhaps, perhaps a supper is concerned. Uh, I know that, that conversation is going on. Um, at this point right now, we do not have transportation available for a drop-off of meals like we did in the spring. Um, however, if that is something you need, I would encourage you to, to reach out to um, Danielle in the office and let us try and figure out a way to um, make sure that we're able to get everybody meals. Um, all students are eligible, ages 1 to 18, uh, so it's just a matter of driving up and, and picking it up. It's just a grab and go, and uh, we have that stuff available to you. So um, if you need it, great. Uh, if you know others that need it, that's great too. Uh, please feel free to spread the word. And again, this will go out so everybody have an opportunity to see that as well. Technology and connectivity. I know this has been a big one, um, you know, up on the up, up on the hill. Uh, that the connectivity issues are a little bit more severe up towards Silvercrest than they can be in town or in other in other schools in the district. We have a we have a, a committee of people or a task force of people, I suppose, that have been working on making sure that every family in the district is connected. Um, there are 75 hotspots that are on order at this point right now to make sure that we can get those hotspots out to our families. Um, I know that we have in, in, in Silvercrest have um, whittled it down to just a, a handful of people that are still having connectivity issues and we're trying to make sure that happens. Um, we are we're kind of separating those out from, you know, I need a, we, we have connectivity, but I need another one for convenience. 
Um, we have connectivity, but there's a lot of people that are on it and we're having a lot of trouble staying up to speed and making sure that we're able to be on our classmates. Or, you know, the third third area is we have no connectivity at all. We need to either go somewhere else to, to be able to make sure that our kids can connect um, or or we need some, some assistance on this very quickly. We are working to address every one of those issues right now. And again, we're down to just a, a small uh, small number of families at Silvercrest that are that are still needing that assistance. And we hope to have that taken care of by the end of this week, which is just a couple more days. So um, so we're hoping to have that taken care of very soon. If, you know, and I'm assuming the people that are on here, there's no, um, no needs at this point as far as connectivity is concerned. But if you know families that do have connectivity issues, please, please, please get in touch with us so we can make it a high priority to make sure that those families can get connected by Friday. Um, that's that's our big goal right now. Student apps. Hey, wait. Yeah, yeah. Um, are we currently using the Drake's Crossing Fire Department? Or students yeah. showing up there? Or what's that looking yeah, like? Yeah, good question. So that was um, that was something that was uh, suggested. Uh, one that we thought was actually an offer on the table for us to be able to use that as we uh, and now I never personally had any conversations with anybody up at Drake's Crossing, um, but my understanding is once we kind of got deeper into those conversations, somehow that ended up not working out. Um, I don't have the details as to why that was the case, but uh, my understanding is that is not um, that's not an option for us at this point right now. I hope that answers that question. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, student absences. So I think it's important to, to recognize that our teachers really only have two options when they're taking attendance for their students. One is a U, which isn't really going down as an unexcused. It's going down as an unexplained. Really, the student you know, hasn't um, engaged, uh, wasn't a part of a Google Meet, uh, didn't engage with their ingenuity, didn't log on to their Canvas. Basically, it's just kind of an unexplained absence. We don't know why, but the student hasn't engaged for 24 hours. And at that point, the teacher would mark a U for the student. Um, if the teacher did have some sort of a connection with the student, either saw that the student logged in and did some work on Edgenuity, uh, logged into Canvas, um, maybe the student showed up on a Google Meet, maybe they emailed back and forth that day, maybe there was a phone call, um, any of that, would be considered a COL, which is connected online. Um, and that would basically be present for the day. So those are really the two choices that a teacher has as far as marking a student present or absent. However, if a student is absent for a day, if your student is ill um, and, and isn't going to engage uh, because, well, they're sick, um, we would ask the parent, uh, call, call the office, call Danielle in the office, and then Danielle can change that to a number of different codes. The student is sick. It's an excused absence. Um, a number of different codes that she can uh, she can code in at that point to make sure that the absence is recognized for what it's meant to, to be recognized as. Um, because there's so much flexibility in how the work gets done and the timeline of the work, um, you know, it would probably be best to connect with the teacher at that point also to see you know, what, what needs to be done for the student for that day or needs to be made up the following day. Um, something along those lines, but um, you can pre-excuse an absence if you wanted to call into uh, Danielle into the main office, and she can actually code that, and the teacher would then see that in their um, in their in their attendance. Uh, but but really, if the student doesn't show up for the teacher, it, it would go as a U. Or if the if the student doesn't engage with the work that day, it would show up as a U and then the parent would still need to make sure they're getting in touch with Danielle to excuse that, just like any regular um, you know, attendance uh, issue that, that would exist on a regular school day if we were in school. So I hope that makes sense as far as student absences are concerned. Um, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty simple process. We're hoping for our teachers, um, but we will troubleshoot any issues that come up as far as that's concerned as those issues come up, okay? And then the last thing, um, you know, when I created this PowerPoint uh, yesterday and earlier today, um, the idea of picture day was in the works. Um, we were contacting a vendor for a fall date. We were hoping to get that, get these done in the next couple of weeks. 
Um, it looks like at this point right now, that date is going to be October 19th. Um, and it looks like it's going to be from 3 to 6 p.m. I'll have this updated next week when we do a town hall again to make sure that the most accurate information is there. Um, but it looks like it's going to be October 19th from 3 to 6 p.m. We are going to do a fall picture day for our students. We're going to do it in the, the turnaround by the gym, the same place that we were doing our grab-and-go lunches. Um, we're hoping to do them outside uh, underneath the, the cover there just outside the gym. However, if the rain is hitting and it's hitting hard, we will have an alternative um, and be able to bring students in one at a time into the gym uh, and be able to take pictures there. So um, that is the idea as far as picture day is concerned. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, that doesn't get dragged out to the spring. We know that people like uh, to have their, their pictures for grandparents and, and family members and just to be able to, um, you know, document, document the beginning of the year. The, the, the student's picture in the fall is always kind of a big deal. So we wanted to make sure that we took care of that as quickly as we possibly could. And, and we're going to be offering that date with Port Portrait Masters on, on October 19th is what it looks like. Again, I'll confirm that a little bit later. So, you know, that's really um, all I've got at this point right now. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can see people um, and if there are questions to be able to answer any questions that you've got. So let me stop sharing my screen, get out of that, and come back here. Um, and so now I would just ask, are there, are there any questions that anybody's got? I've we've got a couple more minutes because, again, I don't want to cross over with the, with the high schools um, meeting at this point, and then we'll have a longer town hall uh, next week on Tuesday to, to be able to answer further questions. But if anybody's got questions for us right now, um, I'm, I'd be happy to answer them. There was a I do, Mr. Lockett. Did you see my message I typed I in the- I did not. Uh, Hi, Kelly. I am, um, I am not looking at the chat bar. Late to the party. Any word um, on K3? Are they close to hitting metrics to be able to do in person? Um, yeah. So there is a different set of metrics for kindergarten through third grade. We are not at a point where we're hitting those metrics right now. Right now, where we are at is um, the possibility of bringing in students for some limited in-person instruction um, based on students that uh, are not able to, they're just, they're just not able to engage. Um, we're starting with uh, some of our special services, um, you know, special ed students and, and what have you, maybe 504s. Um, but students that, that have some of those limitations to begin with that um, will get the limited in-person instruction. And we're looking at possibly starting that as early as October 19th as well. Uh, but, but right okay. now, there has not been, I have not heard any word on when uh, K through three might be able to come back. And, what, and I'm not even 100% certain what that metric is. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I've been at the high school for the last several years. And, and so yeah. being at Silvercrest just for three days, I haven't had an opportunity to take a close look at what exactly those metrics are right now. Yeah, no worries. I just knew they, I, I, I think they're different. Um, I think they're different, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. No, I think you're right. I think they're there, but there's, um, there is a specific metric. And I think that's a really good question, Kelly. I will, I will try and add something of that nature into our um, into our town hall on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate appreciate it, and it's good to see a familiar face and voice. It's nice to hear your voice, Kelly. Other questions? Um, I have a question. If Is that Jessica? I can go next. <laughs> um, back to the technology side of things. Um, I was originally told that there um, would be parent access to see uh, what's been assigned and um, if the students have completed in it or if that's really something that's available. <laughs> um, do, do you not have access? I, I don't know. I guess for me, I get onto my kids and I <laughs> that's my access is that I look at their I look at their canvas and such. Um, so I did do that, but um, I don't I don't know why, but like on the math for this is fifth through eighth graders. I have a fifth grader and an eighth grader. And um, 
when I look at like the math, there's like a whole list of things and it shows um, like all the assignments. So I don't know what's really been assigned and what has it. It's kind of, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's kind of a mess. It looks like he's only done 6% of the work for both fifth and eighth graders. Okay, and typically what what that would reflect is six to eight percent of the total work that's that's looking to be assigned for the semester. So that that would actually be a pretty good sign at this point right now. Right. Signed until today, you know, and to be able to see if okay. he has completed that and whatnot. I just in something case easy. I miss a meeting or yeah. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Want, you want something a little bit that you want something a little bit more user friendly that um and, and I've run into that as well. That's something that um you know I, I can I can totally empathize with. We look at our kids, um, you know, edgenuity or, or their canvases as well, and we see uh, you know a to-do list and and my wife actually typed that question into my son's or daughter's teacher just yesterday, like I see this huge list of things that, that is a to-do list, uh, but is there something that says, this is what my, my child needs to have completed today? Um, so I'll, I'll, I, will, I will get back to you on that and hopefully have a better answer for you than I'm not 100% certain right now. Um, hopefully have a better answer for you on today. That's okay. okay. Do you want I, me to take a... a uh, Jennifer, that one? I, Jennifer, I would appreciate any assistance you can give me at this point. Sure. I'm sorry, I have my camera off because I'm cooking dinner. I understand. Um, uh, so, Jessica, for your fifth grader, it will depend whether Mr. Poole has done continuous or agenda style. If it's agenda style, which is just an internal term, which means that they're scheduling out the assignments. So that would be a good question to ask Mr. Poole if um, how he's using the program if it's going which way it's going and then um i don't know about eighth grade because i'm not familiar with that curriculum i'm sorry but um that would be good. i'm sorry so it was agenda style or continuous what? so you can ask him how he's doing it and um you can assign okay. due dates and change those so um that's something that fifth graders, he could have that for fifth grade. And then, um, oh, I forget what else I was gonna say when you were talking, I was thinking, oh, I'm sorry. I can't remember what else, but hopefully that helps a little bit. That helps a ton. Thank you, Jennifer. And we all, we sure. all lose our train of thought every now and then. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Other questions? We can tell you I don't know too. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, it is about six o'clock or six o three at this point right now. I did want to keep this one relatively short today, just to be able to um, again give you an opportunity to to get to know me a little bit um, and you know give you the courtesy of having an opportunity to ask some questions and get a little bit more information. Um, we are going to do another one of these, and and really, until you hear otherwise, we will be doing these on Tuesdays at six p.m. Hopefully that will give people an opportunity to get home from work and, and engage in the conversations. Um, but in the meantime, if you do have questions, please feel free uh, to email me or to call me or to reach out to your teachers, uh, to your children's teachers, um, and we'll do the best we can to answer whatever questions that you might have. And if there's questions that you would like addressed in one of these town halls, um, please send those to me as well. I, I typically like to put a whole list of questions that came in and then we can answer those questions one at a time as we go through uh, the, the question and answer session. So, um, so I'm happy to to have as many conversations and and personal conversations as as is necessary. Um, I I try to make a commitment to get back to emails within 24 hours and return phone calls within 24 hours. Typically, it's faster than that, um, unless of course, as in Jennifer's case last week, um, an email gets lost in a shuffle of of many emails. Jennifer, I again apologize about that. Um, but uh, but I will do my best to get back to you as quickly as I possibly can, okay? Other than that, thank you for having me here. 
Um, and I'm looking forward to working with you and, and all of your kids. Have a good night.